Hey there, this is Dr. Evan Osar, founder of Fitness Education Seminars and author of The Corrective Exercise Solutions to Common Hip and Shoulders Dysfunction. Thank you so much for tuning into this webinar. If you came to our session at the recent conference, thanks so much for coming. Here's your free webinar. And if you weren't there and you're just trying to learn more about the shoulder, here you go. Let's get started on talking about shoulder problems and what you can do from a corrective exercise perspective to change your client's shoulder and help them accomplish their health and fitness goals. Let's get started. Why do we have so many shoulder problems? Whether we are dealing with professional athletes, whether we're dealing with the general population, so many of our clients come to us with shoulder problems. In this webinar, we're gonna talk about the most, one of the most common things we see with the shoulder and then give you a corrective exercise solution to help this common shoulder problem, which will help your clients not only, only improve their shoulder, but actually even improve their neck tightness as well. Well, if we look through the internet, the internet ex exercise experts don't seem to help us. And here's one common thing you often hear, retract your shoulder blades back. And I mean, pull them back and keep them back, keep your shoulder, shoulder blades together. And that unfortunately is creating a lot of our shoulder problems. And then also our current industry philosophy doesn't help either. Lift heavy, life is too short to be small, pain is just weakness leaving your body, unless you're training this guy or this guy, or even her. Dara Torres, a 41-year-old Olympian who spends $100,000 every single year taking care of her body. But what if these guys right here are your clients? My clients, probably similar to the clients that you guys see as well. Clients that don't spend all the money in the world on their bodies, the clients that have postural and pain issues, the clients that have average motor skills, they're not high professional athletes or high level individuals, they just have average skills. What do you do with these clients? That's what this webinar is all about, is giving you the tools and the strategies you need to work with these clients and help them solve their shoulder problems. So we're gonna look at four key articulations, actually one key articulation of the four key articulations to the shoulder. The SC is a sternoclavicular joint, and that's over here, it's the only bony attachment of the upper extremity to the skeleton, the AC joint, which is right over here, and that's an important joint to getting our arms overhead as well, the glenohumeral joint, which most people think about the shoulder, the ball and socket, and the scapulothoracic articulation. And that's where we're gonna spend most of our time. It's not a true articulation, meaning it does not have a joint capsule, it does not have synovial fluid, it does not have a bursa. However, it's a very important articulation in upper extremity function. And it's one of the biggest keys to developing optimal shoulder stability and function. So what we have to consider when we look at the scapulothoracic joint, and that's the scapula sitting on top of the, of the rib cage, is the shape of the scapula. And if you can see from this image here, if you've ever seen a model or actual, an actual scapula, you'll know the scapula is not flat. It's actually concave on the anterior surface and convex on the posterior surface. It's designed that way because it, sits, it's, it will sit and snug up to the convexity, so the concave surface of the anterior surface of the scapula will sit on the convex nature of the rib cage. So it's almost like two dishes stacked on top of each other. So when we're in neutral or pretty good alignment, we stack up properly. But what happens is when we start to change our thoracic alignment, and change the alignment of our, our rib cage, and now the scapula just sort of floats there. It's not in an ideal position. So now all those muscles that are trying to control that scapula and shoulder complex have to work so much harder because now the scapula is floating versus being snugged up to the thoracic cage. And we'll see what that looks like here in a couple minutes. So the scapula should be positioned about between the levels of T2 to T7. So when you reach behind your shoulder, it should be, if you feel a big bump, or reach behind your neck, and you feel a big bump in your neck, and feel the next bump down, that's T1, and then T2 is right below that. So the scapula should be sitting right about that level, okay? Now, oops, one more thing about this. The scapula border, so the medial border of the scapula should also be relatively parallel. So this border here from the inferior angle, or superior angle to the inferior angle, should be parallel to the spine. So that's gonna be important too as we, as we look at some of the problems that we have with the shoulder. So the three cardinal motions that we're gonna talk about here are rotation in the frontal, transverse, and sagittal plane. And this is important so we understand when we do our corrective exercises which direction we're going for. 
So upward rotation is when the glenoid fa fossa of the scapula faces up, so it's upward rotation. Downward rotation is when it faces down towards the floor. Medial rotation is when the scapula hugs into the thorax. And lateral ro rotation is when the medial border sort of connects into the spine. So again, most of our clients get stuck in medial rotation or, or when the, the pec minor, for example, will pull this, the scapula around towards the front of the rib cage. We want to access more of the muscles like the serratus that pull the medial border of the scapula towards the spine and rib cage. And we also have uh, rotation in the sagittal plane. So that's where the anterior portion of the scapula will move towards the rib cage or towards the front. And we want also to create, well, for our clients with shoulder palms, we actually need to create more posterior tilt. And that's where this inferior border comes towards the thorax. So again, one of the things we're gonna to try to do is restore upward rotation, get more of that lateral rotation, so where that medial border of the scapula comes closer to the thorax, and more posterior tilting, where that inferior border comes closer to the thorax. So again, upward rotation, lateral rotation of the scapula, so it flattens down to the thorax, and then that posterior tilt, where the scapula snugs up to the thorax. And posture is gonna be a big piece of creating those motions. So the upward rotators, which are gonna be key to us correcting and stabilizing the scapula, A is upper trapezius, B is lower trapezius, and C is the serratus anterior. These three muscles work as a forced couple to turn that scapula upwards. Conversely, we have the downward rotators. And from the front, we have the, which is letter B, the pectoralis minor will pull down and forward. And then from the back, the levator scapula, which is A, and the rhomboids that sit right below the levator scapula. And these two muscles, or these three muscles, will pull the scapula into downward rotation. And those, especially in A and C, so the levator scapula and the rhomboids, that's where a lot of our clients get those real knots and trigger points because they're overusing these muscles to create scapular stabilization. And this is also why if you overuse those muscles, you'll create more neck tension because the levator scapula will attach up into the neck. And if you're overusing that levator scapula, it will start to make your neck tight because that's where the other attachment of, of the levator scapula is on C1 through C4 of the neck. So it will lock down the neck trying to stabilize our scapula. So again, that's why it's so important to restore that upward rotation, posterior tilt, and lateral rotation of the scapula down on the thorax where it belongs. So here's the effects of poor posture. In the classic sort of upper lower cross syndrome, client is a little more kyphotic. This is actually an easier posture to deal with than the one we're gonna talk about in a minute. Because again, even if the client's in a kyphotic position, the scapula still tends to sit relatively flat on a thoracic cage. It can get, you can, they can have winging, but it's, it tends to be sort of that convex surface of the rib cage and the concave nature of the scapula. That's a little easier to deal with. Here's a sway back posture. Again, a lot of these clients are, are a little more challenging because their pelvis sways forward, so they're disconnecting their pelvis from their thorax, and they start to hyperextend through their thorax. And now that scapula starts to float a little bit on the thorax. And the worst posture for this problem is where most of us as fitness professionals are, and that's where we're definitely extended through that upper thorax, and now the ribcage angles have sort of flattened out, and that concave nature of the scapula can no longer sit snug to the thorax, and it just floats there. Then we have to use a lot of muscular force to hold that scapula onto the thorax, and that's where we're getting a lot of our trigger points and fatigue in our, in our, in our shoulder stabilizers, which then also creates neck and upper back problems as well. And here's the most common thing we see with our clients is a downward rotation syndrome. And that's where the medial border, if you look at the medial border, the inferior angle here is more medial to the spine than the superior border. And now you see this big slope, both sides, but more on this side. So she actually has inhibition and over lengthening of her upper trapezius, but she's got a downward rotation of both scapula in resting position. This is gonna make it real hard for these clients clients like this, to get their arms overhead because they're starting out in a bad position. And this is where these clients get so many chronic trigger points in their scapular elevators, especially the levator scapula and rhomboids, and where people get impingement because now they're impinging because the scapula is not getting out of the way fast enough or supporting the arm well enough. And we'll see what else this looks like. And this is what happens when the client brings her 
his arm overhead, and you see this image over here to the left. He comes up into nice upward rotation both sides, but as he comes down, this side's control on the left, but you see that winging because he has, he's got poor eccentric control. And we talk a lot about why Y's, T's, and W's, those popular scapular exercises, aren't super effective at improving scapular stabiliz stabilization, and this is why. Because it's not a strength issue. Y's, T's, and W's are generally mobilization and or strengthening exercises this is not a strength issue. This is a poor eccentric control or poor motor control. Why T's and W's will not fix this pattern. We have to teach this client a better stabilization strategy with the scapular stabilizers. Also with the downward rotation syndrome, we get the levator scapula sign. And this is what you see this when the client is starting to load their shoulder, tries to push downs, rows, even lap pull downs, things like that. And you see the levator scapula just jump out of the client's neck. And you can, pal you can palpate it, but you can actually see in most of our clients that the, the hypertonicity of that levator scapula where the arrow is pointing. And this is where our clients are getting so much neck tightness and stiffness. And you see it here again as a client is doing more of a tricep type pattern or pulling pattern. And this is why our, so many of our clients have chronic headaches, neck tension headaches, migraines, upper neck pain, lower neck pain, upper thoracic pain because of this poor scapular, scapular stabilization and trying to use your neck, their necks, rather than the thorax to stabilize the scapula. So how are we going to correct this? This is why we came up with the Integrative Movement System at Fitness Education Seminars to help identify the principles of how we start to change our clients. The first principle is the most important principle is that we have to normalize respiration. Respiration is actually how our clients are breathing. The upper chest and neck strategy is another common reason people have that forward shoulder and forward head. It's almost the most common reason people have it is a forward shoulder, forward head position because of faulty breathing strategy. And that will pull the shoulder forward, pull the head forward, and create dysfunction. What we need to do is help these clients establish better Stability through the core, through breathing right. Intra-abdominal pressure is the best and most effective way to stabilize the core without over-compressing the myofascial system. So that's why respiration becomes our most important focus early on in our corrective exercise strategy. Next, we want to develop centration. And we want centration basically is a fancy word that means control maintaining an optimal position and control of the joint. And there's two components. One component is stabilization and the other is dissociation. Stabilization means you control the joint surfaces, you can joy, control the joint itself, and then you dissociate. So for example, in this image here to the right, the client is stabilizing the scapulothoracic articulation and they're dissociating their arm or the trunk from their shoulder. So they're basically moving their trunk around the stabilized shoulder and scapula, okay? So centration has two components. Stabilize the joint and then move the distal portion of the joint under neuromuscular control. So centration is just a fancy word that says stabilize and move the joint under control. And we'll show you how to do that. Lastly, once you've taught the client how to breathe right, once you've taught them how to centrate the joints, now you have to integrate these things into their fundamental movement patterns of pushing, pulling, squatting, lunging, bending, rotating, and gait. So for our clients with shoulder problems, we're gonna look at pushing and pulling patterns and what that looks like, okay? So respiration, centration, and integration. One thing we can really learn from children is how they develop stability. And if you think about the things we've learned in the fitness industry, we've learned a lot of myths and, and a couple things we've talked about already and things that quite aren't true. If you look at a child, they'll never squeeze their shoulder blades down and back they'll never pull their belly buttons in because they know this. these are faulty patterns. They don't know it, but they intuitively know that that's not how you create optimal stabilization. So one thing we look at in this position here is, a, is this happy little child is creating stability and length through her spine. She's developing intra-abdominal pressure. She's getting the pressure of her shoulders on the scapular spine. She's creating posterior tilting of the scapula and teaching these scapular stabilizers how to stabilize along the thorax. In this image here, we go from a very immature position here where the scapula is up to a position where the scapula starts to come down and around, not down and back, 
but down and around the thorax, and now we start to create that sort of down and around motion that we need to get the arm overhead and to properly stabilize the entire shoulder girdle. And this is what we want to create in our clients to help them restore their shoulder stability. Okay, so first thing we want to do is correct the head and neck position. So we want the client to think long in the back of her head, down in the front of her head. Not jamming the chin down, but just gently tucking the chin down. Now we want her to soften through the chest and lengthen through the back. So this is especially good for those clients that are so hyperextended through their upper thorax. If you have a client that's hyperkyphotic, you're going to encourage them, it's basically the same thing, to get longer through their back. They'll, they'll lift more up towards the ceiling through their back versus what you need to do with this client here. But it's the same strategy. It's just you're coaxing one slightly softer in the front and longer in the back. And the other one, you're still thinking about being longer in the back, but not so that you don't have to worry about being so soft through the front. So it's a very similar strategy whether your client is hyperkyphotic or hyperlordotic like my client is in this picture where she actually has a thoracic lordosis or hyperextended through her upper back. Now we're going to teach a client where to put the scapula. So what we want to do is teach a client that the scapula has to go around, up and around the thorax. And I'm helping the client understand where that position is. So basically she's activating her lower trap and her serratus anterior, like where my fingers are here in the arrow, to teach the scapula to come down and around, not up and this way. Not up and towards her neck, but down and around her thorax. So those are the cues we're also going to use, is down and around, not down and back. We also want the client to think about being long, long through the front of her shoulders so she's not gripping down through her pectoralis minor as she goes in overhead motion. We want it to, to stay long through her spine, but then wide through her shoulders so we can get a more optimal shoulder position for when they get overhead. The wrist position is also important. This is a dysfunctional wrist position on the right where you see a, I'm in ulnar deviation. We want the pressure more towards the thumb side of the hand. We still want it equal sort of like the tripod of the foot. We want the tripod of the hand. Pressure over the hypo, over the thinner pad, the thumb. Pressure over the hypothenar pad or the pinky side of the wrist. But we want that pressure down over the thumb because that sets up optimal scapular positioning and stabilization down and around the thorax. And we did that in class, and you can try it yourself. If you radial deviate, the scapula comes down and around the thorax. If you ulnar deviate, the scapula goes up and around. So the wrist position will feed into proper stabilization of the scapula. Prone thoracic extensions are one of our favorite patterns for restoring stability. What we do is have our clients go down almost in a push-up position. And what she's doing in this position here is we want her to lightly pull down into the table, but still be long through her chest, still be long through her neck, and the scapula will come down and around her ribcage. She's going to breathe into her abdomen because that was that's what's creating the lift. She's not pushing herself up, herself up with the, her arms. She's creating a lift by breathing into her abdomen and then thinking long and gently pulling herself forward. So she's pulling herself into a longer position. And we have videos on our website at Fitness Education Seminars of exactly what this looks like in action. The next pattern we like a lot, especially for clients that are are younger and clients that don't have significant shoulder problems where they can really lie on their shoulder is we lie them in a side lying position and stabilize or put something underneath their head to keep their spine in a nice stabilized position. What I'm going to do is, is I put my thumb right in the inferior angle of her, her scapula and I'm going to have her push her elbow down into the table and as she does that she will elongate her spine and the scapula will come down and around the thorax. So she's basically moving her body over a stationary scapula versus what we do most with most of our exercises is we stabilize the thorax and move the scapula around the thorax. Here we, we go back to our child development positions and say, hey, you know what? We develop stability by first stabilizing the shoulder blade and the arm and moving the trunk around the stable arm. And that's what we're starting to do here in this pattern. And we can see that she gets real nice activation and set up real nicely on that downside scapula. And the, the, levator, sca or the levator scapula stays soft, the rhomboid stays soft, but she gets coactivation of the serratus, low trap, and mid trap as it stabilizes the scapula in that position. 
This is what it looks like from the front side. And she pushes down on the elbow. So you see she's pushing down, which pulls her this direction. We don't want her just to side bend. So she, in this picture, she's, she's actually side bending a little bit. We want her to go this direction as she activates. And as she gets all the way up onto a forearm, she's still connecting that shoulder to her hip. So now the scapula is still in a good position. She's still thinking about being long. And the scapula, and I'm going to encourage her to activate the serratus and that low trap. And I want to see that flat scapula as I'm palpating her from behind. Once we correct this pattern, then we take our clients into plank patterns. Again, this is not where I would start with them. I put them up against a wall on a higher elevated surface so that we can start to develop that renewed kinesthetic position, that new renewed kinesthetic sense of where the scapula is, where her spine is, and teach them where to be. So again, if you have a high level client, they can get to these patterns, but we're not gonna start there. We're gonna start with clients on, with a wall plank or a plank on a elevated surface so that they can develop the optimal control without going into their old bad patterns. Once we have good scapular stability, now we also have to teach them how to push and pull off these patterns. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create stability on one side and that's why my arm is straight out. I'm gonna pull with my opposite arm. What I wanna think about doing when I pull is stay open through the front and stay connected with my serratus so I'm still going down and around I'm not squeezing the scapula back. Squeezing the scapula together is a dysfunctional movement pattern. We want to teach the client how to stabilize the scapula flat on the thorax, not pull back. Same thing with our TRX pull-ups, pull-ups, chin-ups, things like that, as well as deadlifts or any bent over rowing type patterns. Not squeezing down and back, staying nice and wide and long through the back, but with the scapula stabilized throughout the pattern. Pushing patterns is just the opposite. I'm going to, again, create that point of stability here and here. I'm gonna think long and wide through the front of my chest, and I'm gonna push that, push that dumbbell up with my serratus and my pecs, but control it as my arm comes back down. Control it as the cable pulls my arm back. Stay wide and long, but control eccentrically as the arm comes back. There should not be a lot of scapular motion as you go through the eccentric phase. It should be a slight abduction as the arm comes out, a slight adduction as the arm comes back. It should not be a full protraction and retraction as you're going through pushing and pulling patterns. That's a loss of control. What about Y's, T's, and W's? Again, these are good mobilization exercises. They're good kinesthetic awareness exercises of where the scapulae are, but like we talked about earlier, they do not change motor control, and that's where our clients are really lacking their problems. So use them as awareness exercises, use them as mobility exercises, but do not use them as ways to change stability. They will not improve stability, they will improve mobility. Use the isometric positions in the prone, prone thoracic extension or the sideline patterns to increase that, that stability function and then establish that eccentric control the clients need when, they're, when they start to move. So we, we looked at a common problem that we saw with the shoulder and that's mostly the downward rotation syndrome. We have to help these clients establish better placement of the scapula on the thorax and better alignment of the thorax so the scapula sits more flush onto the th thorax. We looked at our principles. Breathing, number one. We didn't go through breathing in this video. We have lots of videos on our website at fitness, fitness education seminars where we go through breathing, but that's the most important and first step in improving scapular and shoulder function. Number two, we teach them how to centrate the shoulder and scapula in the right position. And then three, we teach them how to breathe and centrate and take that into their fundamental pushing and pulling patterns. And then we go through the functional progressions appropriate for your clients. So whether you do Pilates, kettlebells, CrossFit, functional training, sports specific training, yoga, it does not matter. Use your progressions that you already know how to do, but teach a client how not to grip through the front of the shoulder, teach them how to stay wide through the back of their, through their pecs, through the front of the shoulder, teach them how to control that scapula as they go through whatever patterns you're taking them through. If you're looking for further resources, like I said, we have free videos at our website, www.fitnesseducationseminars.com, and my wife and I created Fitness Education Seminars for the, the fitness professional that works with the general population. We train and condition and treat mostly the general population clientele and that's where we came up with these strategies because we wanted to work with 
the clients that we saw, but we also want to help fitness professionals, professionals that saw the same clients that we do. We have assessment, corrective exercise, and functional training progressions on our website and tons of free videos. So check that out. Sign up for our newsletter. We send out a news, free newsletter almost every two weeks and with video content that will help you serve the clients that you're meant to serve. I hope this webinar served you. I want to thank you for watching it. Thank you for allowing me to share with you. I hope it helped you gain a little perspective and a little information on the shoulder so you can help your clients achieve their health and fitness goals. This is Dr. Evan Osar with Fitness Education Seminars. Take care. We'll catch you next time.